really agree to take part in this new way and speak to us about project work and creativity. Nina Lover holds a BA in humanities. She has been teaching at all levels for many, many years and for several years has been involved in educational consulting and teacher training. She has given workshops all over Spain and abroad and has collaborated with the British Council Bell International and the Ministry of Education on professional development programs. She is a materials writer for ENT and Hill Books and currently works as a freelance author, editor and teacher trainer. Today she is going to talk to us about the benefits of project work. Nina, thank you very much for accepting our request to be part of the interview and your service. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be there. I'm not used to sitting behind the table to teach, so I'll be standing. And if I don't kill myself or knock over the camera or the computer or anything, it will be a miracle. We can leave happily. So, yes, my name is Nina. Uh, we're going to talk about project work at all levels, from kindergarten up to bachillerato level. We're going to look at different ideas for different students, different topics. Uh, this is my web page but it will be on the last slide and it will also be on a handout that will be posted on the blog. Okay? I decided not to bring photocopies because my experience in conferences is they get lost and also poor trees, poor trees. Every time there is a conference we probably chop down about 20 trees for the conference. So let's begin. What we're going to do in the next hour and a half uh, we're going to do a warm-up for you to find out about the teacher, for me to find out about you. We're going to define our terms, what is a project, what's project work, and then we're going to look at lots of different practical examples from different levels. Okay? Uh, the talk is in English. If there is an emergency, you're not following, just and I can do it in Spanish or Muscara Pishka Pishka So I can maybe say a word or two to scare. Okay. So let's start with a little warm up. Getting to know you. So, we've got some slides. Let's see if you know where the slides are from. Where's this one from? Where's this one? Ireland. Who is this one? UK. Where's this one? Very quickly, tell your neighbor, where's Nina from? Where am I from? Tell your neighbor. If you know, then shh. If you already know, then shh. So tell the person next to you, where am I from? Where's Nina from? Very nice place to visit one day, if you'd like to go. <laughs> the next one. Oh, sorry, I took 
see that? Oh, you can't see the number, sorry. We've got to get 10, 15, or 20. How many years have I been <laughs> <laughs> teaching? If you think the correct answer is 10 years in the classroom, snap. children since I was a child and working with adolescents since I was a teenager. So many, many years uh, working with uh, language and not with language. So what about for you in terms of your teaching experience? How many people here have less than five years? One to five years in the classroom. Good. <laughs> good. Five to ten years? Teaching? Good. Gosh, ten to fifteen? <laughs> More than fifteen? What are you doing? <laughs> this is crazy. This is a big jump slide. <laughs> Lovely television program. Oh, what are you doing? So well done, all of these veterans who are here. Many of you will have been working with projects for many, many years. Feel free to share your ideas. I'm going to show you some things I've done, some things my colleagues have done, but that doesn't mean that this is the only way of doing it. So feel free. Oh yeah, Nina, we do the same thing, but we use this method instead of this. Or Nina, I found that with my teenagers it worked better when I did it like this. Fine. You know, we each have our own way of working. We can all learn from each other. So next one. Oh, this one's difficult. <laughs> so we've got three animals. What are the animals? We've got a dolphin, a lizard, and a polar bear. So if Nina, if I were an animal, Nina, which animal would I be and why? So tell the person next to you. Oh, I think she'd be a mm, because she's very. What animal would I be? Or something at 8 in the morning. So I always call. 
cold. I always feel the cold. So I'm a bit like a reptile. I'm always looking for a sunny place to get warm. And yes, also, I move very quickly. Speak very quickly. <laughs> if you don't understand me at some point, please just do a... It's not you. Even my mother has to sometimes say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so quickly, so quickly. So don't worry. It's not you. It's me. So yeah, like a little. If we have more time, of course, and in class, when I do this with the students, we then brainstorm animals, we brainstorm characteristics, and they take turns. I'm like a horse because I'm strong. I'm like a lion because I'm brave. So things like this. The next one. Oh, you're not going to do this one. What about this last one? Ah, too quickly. This last one. We've got three activities. What are the three activities? We've got at the top, what's this? Cooking. This one is rollerblading or rollerblading and this one dancing. What do I like to do in my free time? Let's see, hands up for dancing. But I like dancing, Nina. Good. Let's see if you think I like cooking. Hands up. And if you think I like doing sports, like rollerblading and things like this, ding, 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 good. Sports. Well done. <laughs> well done. Yeah, actually, I've been living alone for almost 25 years now. I'm still I'm only mastering spaghetti and fried eggs. <laughs> good eater. Good dishwasher, but not very good cook. And the dancing. Do you know this expression in English? To have two left feet? <laughs> Look it up in the dictionary. Probably you see me in some windy photos. So now I know that as teachers you have very little free time, but when you have that miracle of free time, what do you do? So quickly tell the person next to you, oh I like reading, or I go skating, or I go to the beach. What do you do in your free time? Yeah. <laughs> 
fascinated as to where it's coming from. Okay, so what do we think? Any ideas? Anybody willing to tell us what they think our project is? No? You didn't have an espresso after lunch? Or you're too afraid to say? Well, I'll show you what the definition is in the dictionary, which is ridiculous. In the dictionary, it says, a project is a piece of research. A problem undertaken in school. So that really helps a lot. <laughs> that, that barely defines anything. So this is a very wide definition of what project work would be. But when we talk about projects, projects are normally an in-depth investigation of a real-world topic. Again, this idea of in-depth is very dependent on the age. When you're five years old, in-depth is not as in-depth as when you're 15 years old. But the idea here is that it's something that you have to investigate in some way. So some sort of an investigation going on. Projects can be done, of course, with any age group. And don't worry, all of this is on your handout. All of this will be on your final handout. Uh, younger children, it's more sort of playing, exploring. Whereas with older children, it's normally something quite systematic. We normally have an order to what's happening. With younger learners, it's probably a bit wider and a bit more general. Uh, the goal of the project, very important here, learn more about a topic rather than this right, wrong answer business. So again, quite often in school, in traditional teaching, we're conditioned into this right, wrong, yes, no, true, false, A, B, C, and children get used to that. And project work is a bit of a break because we could each do a project on Nicaragua and we could each have different results. And while the project has followed the instructions, each project could be completely correct, could receive a good grade without having the same angle, the same presentation, or the same style. So again, project work is very nice for mixed levels, very nice for diversified learners. So when we talk about project work, it should be student-focused. Should be. Doesn't always happen. Should be curriculum-based. Makes it easier for them to see the connections between what they're doing. It's great for integrated skills. So quite often this is something that we try to get done in the textbooks, quite difficult to combine skills sometimes, whereas project work does this very naturally. <coughs> they're reading, they're chatting, they're writing, they're looking, they're presenting, so there are lots of different skills taking place at the same time, structured and product-led. And again, it's very nice what you were saying this morning in the, in, there was a session on secondary, talking about projects, that the product can also be very open. It doesn't have to be a piece of paper with words on it. It could be a song or a show or a PowerPoint or something. And again, the product has to be quite open, that it can't always be in the same format, and that there should be some sort of an audience, that projects are meant to be shared. It's not something just for me to keep privately or to just share with my teacher. So these are sort of the main things of project work, and they should be fun. It should be something that encourages students to want to do them again. So let's take a look here at projects. What I would like you to do now is think of some reasons why we use product, uh, use project, or some words related to projects. For example, we use projects because they are personalized. Or you might say we use projects because there's a product. So using the first letters, P, R, O, J is difficult. Don't worry. If you can come up with one for J, fantastic. It's not the word. E C T S. Think of words related to projects or project work. So, for example, if we look here at C, it could be that projects are co -la collaborative. For example, okay. So you've got two minutes. Come up with as many words as you can. One word for each, if you can, with your group. So words related to projects. Words related to projects. So either alone, in a note, or a partner, like a studio.
Teams. 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 Working in teams. Very good. So we've got task based, topic based. And with S? Which one? Oh, I couldn't hear. Scaffolding. Ah, scaffolding. Excellent. That it provides scaffolding. Because we're giving them sort of step by step instructions. Fantastic. Everybody knows what scaffolding is, no? This idea of like, los andamios. Scaffolding, la definición, la traducción es andamio. And it's this idea that we give them support, but as they become more confident, we can take some of the support away. Just like los andamios, no? Salai, like la vida. You take them down little by little. So very nice. Steps, anything else for S? Satisfaction. Self-evaluation. Self so we have peer evaluation, teacher evaluation, self-evaluation. Self-learning. Self-learning, exactly. This whole idea of learner autonomy, learning on your own. Which one? Student-centered. Yes, self-esteem. You know, it's not always easy to fill in grammar tables or to know if it's ah and or the proper spelling rule. But you might do a beautiful project even though your English isn't the best English in the class. You might be able to present a very, very beautiful project. So things like this schoolwork, it's also something that can be supplementary. Some people use project-based learning as their entire curriculum, but it can be used as something once a term, once a year, you know, once a month, you decide. It can be just something you add on to your coursework if you want. Other reasons for using projects, and again, all of this is on your handout. You know, projects provide authentic use of English, provide variety for students and teachers, promote learner autonomy, as you were saying, self-learning. Can be decided you know, by the students, by the students and the teacher, by the teacher, you know, very, very flexible way of working in class, and also establishes a context for students to be working in, which quite often in the traditional class is quite forced, whereas in project work it becomes quite natural. So getting started just very, very quickly, Explore your curriculum. <laughs> you start with what you're already working on. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. There's a syllabus and a curriculum you're working from. And from that, you can decide, well, what resources have I got? What skills do they know? What language level have they got? So you decide. And as we'll see later, projects can be something simple done in a, a day or something that takes the whole year. So decide what you're working on and what you've got. Try to identify what's appealing to you and your students before you begin. Think of a skill. What, what are you working on? It, of course, if we try to do the four skills integrated in full force, we're in trouble. And again, this is reflecting what was said in secondary this morning. You were saying that you wanted the, they wanted the students to focus on images on the presentation and to use their oral skills to describe. They didn't just want text, 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 text on the whole slide. So what was the observation and the, what was the skill being used? We want them to use visual skills and oral skills. But maybe you do another project where you want them to be doing reading and writing skills. Fine. You decide. But it's not always possible to focus on all of the skills in equal amounts. So decide what your focus is. You know, for example, are you going, if you are a language teacher doing this, is there a structure you want them to use? If you are a content teacher, is there a structure you want them to be focusing on to make it easier for them? So you might, for example, you know, if I'm talking about habits, you might need to say, uh, what's the vocabulary we need from the context, from the content? So make sure that they're prepared for the vocabulary, things like that. So these are just some ways to get started. And of course, uh, you know, offer the focus to the, to the language level. So, so if you're working in science, Try to collaborate with the English teacher so that at least you're more or less on the same page of what they're capable of linguistically. And then all of this information on this slide is taken from a place called Fact World. I don't know if you've heard of this website. Fact World, excellent resource for project work, CLIL, and many other things. So it's factworld.info. But if you just go to Google and you put F-A-C-T-W-O-R-L-D, Fact World, you'll get loads of information. This is a page run by Keith Kelly in Bulgaria. So different types of projects. When we talk about projects, is there a set style or a set type of project or is it flexible? 
flexible. So projects can be very short or can be very long, long term and short ones. Again, maybe I am not a project purist. And I have had run ins with project purists to tell me things like, you can't possibly do a project in one class period. I work with kids in kindergarten. <laughs> You're not going to get them to do a nine month project. <laughs> you, know, you know, I think that the more flexible we are and the more we adapt to our own needs and our own pupils, the better. You know, some of them are obsessed that, you know, if they're not doing research, I'm like, what research is a four year old going to do? You know, it's not about research at that age. It's maybe about self-reflection at that age. So in my personal opinion, a project can be something short or long. <coughs> I think projects can be done individually. You can do a project with a pair. You can do a project with a group. <laughs> you can do a collaborative project with a group that's even bigger. You can do class to class, school to school, country to country. Again, you decide. And I think, again, variety is key here. But, you know, we don't want to always be doing the same type of project. While we don't want them to always be working in groups, we don't always want them to be working alone. But the more variety we can offer in project work, the better. And then what about types of projects? What types of projects can we do? For example, one of them could be a research project. What other types of projects could we do? For example, your projects this morning were drama projects, no? Fantastic projects with a sort of songs and stories. And for example, the projects that you were talking about were based on? Oh, no. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly, so topic-based. You know, she was doing countries or food. So you could do topic-based. It could be something with drama or with shows, you know, an end of the year show. It's a project. Is there a finished project? Is there a finished product? Is there an audience? Is it fun? Hey, it's a project. Any other types of projects that you can think of? Or anybody else who's done projects in class? Have you done any different types of projects? Has anybody done, for example, a science fair? No? Science fair project, a newsletter. Have you ever done like a class blog or a class newsletter? It's a project. Most of you working in Primaria, you probably do the end of the year show where they all come out and sing head and shoulders or whatever they do. So I mean that's a project. Or at Christmas time, you sing a Christmas carol. It's a project. It's a class project. So projects that I think be almost anything, research investigation, a hands-on project, you know. It might just be that we have a research sheet, we're putting our hand in the box, is it hard or soft? We're investigating and marking our results. Experiments, surveys, and questionnaires. I think one of you had surveys today, knowing that you've done surveys or questionnaires with the students as well. So this idea of interviews, surveys, reports, posters, demonstrations. It can be focused on the curriculum, focused on a theme, focused on science, presentations, shows, parties, newsletters poetry competition, story writing. I mean, the list could go on and on and on. And I think this is another thing that was very important in the session this morning, that, you know, don't, don't limit yourself. On the contrary, open it up as much as you can to as many students as you can in as many ways as you can. So, some different types of projects. Again, all of this is in your handout. So, it's all beautiful and wonderful and collaborative and, oh, it's so great. <laughs> Aha! Not that easy. Quickly tell the person next to you, what are some of the things you say? Ombre, muy bonito, pero... Si, me parece muy bien, pero... So, what are the perils? Tell the person next to you. What are the problems?
but come on, you must have some complaints. I've never met a group of teachers who say, oh yes, the projects are perfect, the projects are perfect. <laughs> come on, fess up. What are some of the problems? Uh, when they present, it doesn't work. Teachers, exactly, teachers see lots of them. <laughs> exactly, we see a lot of problems, so let's hear them. Exactly. Exactly. We quite often see projects as being time consuming. Again, this is why we have to decide if we're going to use them and how often we're going to use them. But explaining grammar can also be very time consuming. Organizing other things on the curriculum can also be time consuming, but you're right, depending on the type of project we do. And again, this is why I think we have to be very open minded about project work. Because this can be a disaster that takes a long time for us and that just takes up the whole class, or it can be something just done a little bit over a number of class periods or done as a once a term assignment. But very good, yes, they can be very time consuming. Any other problems? Okay, then we'll go here and then over here. Yes, so what? Exactly. Sometimes it's very difficult to make them work together. So what situations do we have sometimes when we make them work together? Say, okay, could I please have one, two, three, four in the group? And one of them says, no. So we have some of these things. Are these things that we need to work on with them? Yeah, because we're not only English teachers or science teachers or math teachers. We're also people who are sort of inculcandoles formas de vida. And do you always sit next to your best friend in the claustro? No. So again, part of this I think is also educating beyond the classroom. So yeah, they will. They will. They'll pull all of this up. That's what we're there for. To help them understand that yeah, But it is a problem. And it will come up. Good. Another problem. Twenty-five students. One teacher. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to education. Yeah. <laughs> and we're lucky. In China, they have 60, 75. <laughs> so, you know, we should consider ourselves fortunate. But, the, but yeah, sometimes the ratio is difficult for drama games, for projects, for a number of things we want to do in class. Sometimes the proportion is difficult. Very good. Any other difficulties? Did you find noise? Yeah, but noise. Yeah, that's not only with project work. But you're right. Good. They make it lost in the research. You have to set very well what the aims are. Totally. Because otherwise they... Okay, they are overwhelmed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. Totally. Because quite often, what do they do? They go to Google, they put the word in English, and wah, they get 500 pages, all in native English. Here I am, I am Bobby, I have a hamster, and suddenly looking, you know, the volcanic tetra, you know, blah, 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 was once designed to, uh, that it's too high level for them. So we have to really be careful about research. Frankly, they don't know what you're asking. What you're asking. Exactly. So we have to be very clear. Exactly, they get lost in research. Very good, especially online. They get lost in research and end up on Facebook, and then we have no no project or anything. So some of the other so well done. Some of the other things I've heard over the years from teachers is I Does this happen in project work? Yes. Does this happen anyway? Yes. It's not like we're sitting there teaching them present simple or teaching them about volcanoes and they're all, oh, I know about volcanoes. No, they're also speaking in Castellano or Amoscara. So it's not isolated to project work. It's something that happens in monolingual classes. So again, we have to make sure that, like you said about the research, make sure they have very clear roles and then, or give them two minutes of Spanish time or two minutes of Buscara time, get it out of their system, and now we're going back to English. It's not the end of the world. The end product is more important than that one or two minutes that you're sacrificing for Buscara. So you might have a problem with them using their own language. When they're in a group, sometimes the group dynamics. Exactly. Thank you. Exactly. So no matter what we do, whether we're doing a pair work activity or whether we're doing a reading or whether we're doing, there are some learners who do nothing. There are some who do nothing. Again, it's a better structure, like you said about structuring the research. 
the better we structure the tasks that your role is to do this. Your role is to do this. Well, if you see her doing her job, you say, hey, 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 who was in charge of picking the illustrations? Let her do her job. So again, if everybody has a very clear role, some of this can be avoided. But as you said, this is life in education. Some of them will do nothing. The groups work at different speeds. Yeah. So sometimes one group is finished, one group is Again, fast finishers is not isolated to project work. This happens to us all the time. And one of the biggest ones I hear from teachers is copying. Copy. Copy. Especially in ESO. They're always like, hey, can you let's do it for Yiktos? Porque siempre copy in the Google. I'm like, ah, vale. Well, no, hacemos ya proyectos porque cortan y pegan el Google. Sacabo. Ya he lavado las manos, no tengo que hacer proyectos. Do they copy? Anyway, like for example, when you give them page 45, workbook, and activity 7, 8, 9, they all do it personally at home. Nobody is outside the classroom door. They, nobody's copying, no? When I say those exams, nobody copies. It only happens with projects. Now they do it up at the session of celebrity. One of the best things about copying in project work is it's so easy to catch them. You take the sentence on Cleopatra, you put it in Google, you open the web page and say, oh, E? How did that happen to be written by two people simultaneously? <laughs> this man wrote it in 2006, and you just happened to think the exact same ideas with the same words in the same order in 2012. So it's so easy to catch them. So I think it's much more difficult to catch someone cheating or copying when it's rellenar los huecos, then on a project. So, again, explain to them the consequences and the rules about copying. But in pasarlo en cosas que encontrado, si corta y pegan, ah, zero. Nothing. For the whole group, zero. Plagio, no. So you teach them that, and again, inculcándoles valores que van a necesitar cuando son mayores. When they go to university and they have to do a project, if they can, in a work that is done, copy on the internet, they will fail university. So this is something we can begin to teach them at 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, so when they're older, they know that copying and cheating is not to be done. But again, when we live in a society full of, you know, discos piratas and kibule and stuff, times are changing, so these things will happen sometimes. Phases of a project, and we're going to now move on to the project work. Choose a topic, develop the project, <coughs> and figure out what the product is at the end. So again, sometimes when we say it takes up so much time, it takes up so much time, sometimes we make it very time consuming. Yeah, pick a topic. What do you expect from them? Do it. <laughs> you know, just decide what time frame you're working on, what level you're working with, and take it from there. So now we'll take a look at some different examples of project work. It's very, very late in the afternoon, and you've all had a large meal. So can everybody please put both feet on the floor? Nice firmly on the floor, sit up nice and straight in your chairs. I'm going to stand up, but you don't have to stand up. Very good, so sit up nice and straight. Good. Shoulders go, your shoulders back twice. Good. Roll them forward. Good. Take one hand and hold your nose. Cross the other arm over to the opposite ear and change. Change back. Change back. Now we're going to do it three times quickly. Are you ready? One, two, three. Good. Shake your arm toe. Good. And then very good. Up. So now we're going to look at some practical examples. Uh, project work. Very good. Does anybody work in kindergarten or with very young learners? Like sort of under six, under seven. Fantastic. Very good. So what about projects in kindergarten? Can you tell us anything? Uh, do they tend to be high level, low level, long term, short term? Projects in kindergarten? Or have you done any projects with your students? Or with the young learner teachers? Have you done any projects? Very good. And if, did you, have you done a couple of projects with the young learners? Or anything yes. sort of, what have you done? Well, it's, uh, it's a, more than a project, it's a uh, demonstration of their topics in a 
global. Very good. So globalized. Globalized. Fantastic. So globalized learning. Very good. Which involves projects and things. Good. Any other sort of projects that people have done with very young learners? No. Yeah, we'll take a look at a few. So here, when we talk about projects with very young learners, you need to have, of course, a context, which is again what we talk about quite often with this globalization. There's some sort of a, a base for what they're working on. Uh, this is where we're starting to inculcate this idea of sort of group collaboration, group cooperation. At this age, they're very, very selfish. So this is when we're starting to teach them how to work with other people. And again, if you teach your patch they're up, but don't worry, this won't hurt you. It's just a few minutes. And they support children's natural impulse to investigate. One of the words we came up before with exploring, experimenting. Young learners do this instinctually. So we should be providing project work for them so they can investigate. Projects are especially valuable for young learners because their intellects are rapidly development, developing and we can really achieve long-term goals with this. So just as the bilingual brain is being formed at a very young age, all of this sort of lateral thinking, critical thinking skills, processes, all of this is also happening at that age. The younger we start them on project work, the more capable they'll be of doing project work as they get older. So for those of us working in higher levels, if you have kids who know how to work on projects well, it's probably because they had good training when they were younger learners. So all of this comes together as teachers, you know, we have to work as a team. So let's take a look here at some photos of some different projects. Sorry if you can't see them very well. But try to think of what some of these projects might be. For example, here we have a young kid on the floor and everyone's drawing around him. What would this project be? It would be my, my body. A project on my body. Very good. What about this one? What's this? A, a house. So my, my house. So my home. What about over here? What do you think? Over here? Sorry, John. There's a pointer over on the yeah, I don't know how to aim it. What about this one? My friend. Good. Gone for holidays. What about over here? Oh, sorry. Over here? School. Together, 
the better. So, you know, if you can work with a team at the school so that you're all sort of picking a topic and trying to work around that topic as you do in, in lower levels, we could continue that a little bit into primary with project work and helps a lot. So let's take a look. This is a typical topic that we find in EFL books, in second language books, you know, amazing animals. So how can we tie that into other areas? For example, if I'm the socials teacher, I might work on the kids looking at a map and we mark where the animals from the book in English class live on the world map. So I'm going to give you now two minutes. I want you to think of other subject areas, music, art, science, <coughs> language <coughs> arts, maps. How could we link animals to projects or topics in other areas? We understand? Like for example, if we said animals, a song about animals or animal noises. Okay, so go, two minutes. Try to think of other subject areas. Noises. I, I haven't done this for years because 
This is how old I am. I used to have it on a record on an LP, whale songs. So this like, the whales communicate. The kids loved it. We tried to explain to them what they were saying, were they happy, were they sad, and they were fascinated by whale songs. So animals tell us how animals communicate with one another, science, the parts of the body. You know, they've done the parts of the body in English, let's do it now with the animals, or labeling animals, animal groups, as you spoke about, you know, mammals and birds and reptiles, physical education, how they move, bodies, bones, nutrition, are they carnivorous, omnivorous, herbivorous, so things like this, looking at different types of animals, language arts, poems, riddles, rhymes, stories, comics, all of these things, history, animals of the past, dinosaurs. <laughs> I know, but there's still kids who love dinosaurs. I can't believe it. It's the most timeless topic that's ever been. Because you still find kids who come up to you and freak out about dinosaurs. It goes through phases where they all freak out about dinosaurs, but there are still a few in the class who will be woo for dinosaurs. Animals of extinction or danger of extinction are to craft animal maps. They also love doing these things like paw prints. We have to match the print to the animal. Again, things where now as an adult, you're like, eh. But they get into it. You know, looking at the shape of the hoof, and is it this type of animal or that type of animal? Maths, measurements, graphs, pie charts. So all of these things. So again, just showing ways. And again, I think the more globalized we work as a team at the school, the more the children understand that these topics do cross over. That, you know, we do tend to... It's so funny, in, in, in preschool and in the first years of education, things are very sort of communal, and then we share them, and suddenly you get up to sort of bachelor you're out there, and you find people say, I hate history. I'm like, how can you hate history? How is it possible to hate history? History is part of music. History is part of computers. History is part of everything you do. You know, there's a past and a present and a future. So things like that, that they get so compartmentalized by the age of 15 and 16 that they forget that all of these things are interrelated. You can't do one thing without the other. You can't love technology and hate history. Where do you think that came from? That came from somebody one day discovering there was a phone, discovering there was a phone could go without a cable, discovering that the cable didn't need to actually have a phone, that you could actually... So I mean, all of this has to be taught to students, and that we as teachers, I think, have that obligation to teach them. So let's take a look now at some different topics. So for example, art, creativity. You might just do something very simple with children, like this, show them some items for their project. You say, we're going to do an art project. Look at these things. You're going to each be given, each group, and you're going to be given socks, buttons, plastic bottles, some cardboard tubes, and some cardboard boxes. <laughs> Your task is to come up with a finished product using these. Tell the person next to you what could you make using a combination of these items or just one of the items. So tell the person next to you, ah, you can make a... Transportation. 
transportation, no. Robot, yes. No. Everybody's right. It doesn't matter if you said town or if you said puppet or if you said transportation. And then I would say, okay, your group's going to make transportation, your group's making some puppets, your group's have to make an animal, your group's have to make a robot. And then we would share the product with one another. Is it? I mean, of course, this one requires a certain amount of materials, recycled materials. But would it be an extremely time-consuming project? It's one of these typical projects that you would do before Christmas, before summer holidays, when they're tired, it's Friday afternoon, they've come from physical education class, they're not going to learn anything anyway, so let's do a project. There's no problem. And if you're the art teacher, great. If you're the English teacher, great. It doesn't really matter. If you're the music teacher, tell them that they can only make instruments, that it has to be some sort of an instrument. And they will. I mean, they'll, they'll drill little holes into that into the tubes and make trumpets or they'll make drums, they will figure out a way. So again, this idea of using creativity is very important in project work. Another thing you can use for projects is any type of mascot. I use a little explorer's figure that I'll show you now, but for example, a friend of mine uses a rubber ducky. And so the rubber ducky goes with him everywhere. So you know, he goes and he takes photos and that's the project. And then the children have to use a little puppet or a mascot to do the same thing. They either draw or take photos with the animal or with the doll or with the puppet to come in and show others. So the project could be, okay, uh, this week we're going to be talking about the town. I want you to take photos of the mascot with different buildings in town or with different means of transportation or with different, so whenever we're doing a unit, we bring the real world in. So in this case, for example, this was the explorers on the road and here they were in different forms of transportation. So we had like, you know, the explorer here was on a, on a boat here, on a bike, in the submarine. So taking soldiers of the explorer, traveling in different ways, or another project could be the explorers, you know, going to different shops in town, or the explorers with different animals, or the explorers, for example, I've used this a lot for things like things we can improve at our school, things we can improve in the neighborhood. So, you know, there's a lot of rubbish on the ground, a photo of the explorer, we should clean up the park. You know, the, the loo at school, completely destroyed, you know, we should take care of the bathroom at school, things like this. So it can also be used for values, education, for moral and civic education. So ways of using mascots in projects. This one could be a class project, that we're bringing photos and then we just have them on the wall where the explorers have been this month, where the ducky has visited this month, things like that. You can also do more extensive projects to get them sort of used to what project work will look like when they're older. In this case, as an introduction to the project, I want you to look and guess the correct answer of this department. So, decide where... <laughs> Endangered. So let's 
find out. Let's see if your answers were correct. So here we have. So take a read through the information. It can be a PowerPoint, it can be a poster, it can be a song, it can be whatever. 
whatever you decide it to be, but giving them a model, come to our festival, and then again with graded research. So they have information. If they want more information, they can get it. If the kid's bilingual and his mother's from Germany and speaks perfect English, well, go and find all the information you want. If you haven't got that help at home, we give you help by giving you graded research information to do the project on. Uh, this is just the last one we're going to do. Any ideas where these flags are from? <coughs> They're difficult. No, we have to be up there. This one you should know. This one to be easy. Mexico. Points. So, for example, if you want to have a detached house, 
you might not have a garage. <laughs> if you want the garage and uh, you know a detached bathroom, well, maybe you're going to have to put up with traffic every morning. So things like that. So again, giving them choices. And then what did they do with this? They presented their housing project. So they had to work in a group. We decided together that we preferred a smaller house that was close to town, and the other one said, oh, no, 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 we decided it was a much better house outside town. So again, these things can be set up by, on your own. It doesn't have to be out of a book or out of a magazine. But just this idea of giving them points, giving them options, and giving them a limit of points, so they have to negotiate, and they have to figure it out. So it could be that individually, showing the group of three, then the three of you have to come to consensus, then you have to show it to another group, and so it becomes a big, big, big project between the whole class, and then you finally come down to like sort of two or three different options and then vote on the one that would be the most attractive to the class, or things like that. It can be done for older students. Let's take a quick look. We're not going to do this one, actually. I'm going to just do one last thing with you on story writing, which is another way of doing projects, writing stories. So in this case, we're going to do a story writing activity called Table Tennis Tales. This is for older learners. This would be for... Students now getting into SO, for sure into SO. You can even use it for bachelor at them. I know that most people don't like having balls thrown at them. Don't worry, they're very soft, they won't hurt you. <laughs> if you're really afraid, just put your head down. <laughs> but I'm going to just toss the balls out to the group. So grab one if you can. If it falls on the floor, pick it up. <laughs> Back. There you go. Oops. Okay, so can someone grab this one that's rolling along? <laughs> they don't go. Okay, let's see. Who's got the five balls? Let's take a ball up in the air. I've got one, two, three, four, five. Good. Who has the ball that says CH1? CH1. Who's the first character of our story? Could you make notes? Could you just make notes? I might, I might, not, I might not remember. So let's see who they can be anything. Anything or any bird or any animal. What's the first character? A cat. So the first character is a cat. Keep hold of the ball. Who's got C2? CH2. Who's the other character? We've got in the story a cat and a a cat and a dog. So the second thing is a dog. Who's got S E for elephant? S E. What's the no? Not S I. S E for elephant. S E. What's the second? Where are the dog and the cat? At the beach. At the beach. <laughs> Very good. Who's got S I? What's the situation? A dog and a cat at the beach and? Sorry? What's the situation? Okay. Like the weather, the situation, the... Uh... Oh, okay, so a dog and a cat on the beach, sunbathing. Very good, and who's got the M? What's the mood? What's the mood? How are they feeling? Are they able to yell? Are they happy? Are they sad? Are they fighting? They're very relaxed. Very good. And everyone with a ball. Pass it or toss it to someone else. Pass it or toss it to someone else. The ball goes to someone else. Okay, so that's good. Just try another one. Oh, okay. Very good. And they do go crazy. Don't worry. It's once in a year. It's not going to kill you. Okay, have I got new people with new balls? CH1. New characters. No dog, no cat, no beach. New characters. A girl. Young, old. Young. A young girl. CH2. Where's CH2? Oh, it's okay, don't worry. No, you've got it. I'm sorry, you've got it. Who's the other character? That's okay. Who's the other character? We've got a young girl. Ah, Ava. Tenemos una niña joven y quién es el otro personaje de cuenta. No, no, Number one for your story. 
factors are cut in the dog, it's setting at the beach, placing some bathing, and they are relaxed. Okay? Option two for the